Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Andrew Maxey. There you go. I told you sounds and everything, man. Love it. Hey, I just actually had the opportunity to uh, connect with Andrew over the last little while uh, through email. We just started talking too, so this is my first time just to kind of sit down with Andrew. And actually, he has a book that just came out uh, at the end of 2021. It's called The Elephant in the Classroom. Before we get into the three questions, Andrew, uh, can you just kind of give like the the 30 second overview of this book? Cause it's going to be linked in the description down below for anyone interested in, in reading more. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on George. And uh, the book in a nutshell attempts to provide a snapshot of the complexity of teaching. I think teaching is so complex. Everyone in education understands like not almost like there's not a mystery to everything that's part of education, but we don't have a common map or a snapshot. And I think that because we don't, it allows us to forget that complexity when we're making decisions. Mm -hmm. So the book attempts to say, what does the research say? What do teachers say about basically answering the question, what is teaching? So it traces 13 competencies and practices that are integral to teaching. I, like I'm dying to ask you questions about this, but then I'll totally get off track for the other one. So we're going to save it for the longer podcast because okay. right? I got I got a lot of questions based on just the you said there too. So I'm excited to learn more about your book. But um, you know, you said you know, like you said, teaching is really complex, and you know, um, but I think there's there's also really some simple things that we have in our lives, some things that really make us remember our teachers. So when you look back at your um, you know, your educational career, whether it's a student, whether it's as a teacher, who's like a teacher that sticks out to you and why? I love it. Um, because I've been in education for so long, I have to apologize to the hundreds of people I've worked with and learned <laughs> from that I don't mention here. But I, I have to go with uh, well, my high school language arts teacher, Owen Fine. I didn't figure out that I was going to be a teacher until I got to college a uh, semester in. Uh, but looking back, it's it's clear to me to see that he and others had a really strong influence on pushing me in that direction. And and I think the thing that uh, stood out the most for me, for, for Mr. Fine, is that he really taught me and taught the students to ask questions, to really dig in. So I was a really voracious reader, but I would just read to read the story. And I would get so annoyed with him that he didn't want to tear it apart and basically think about what we were reading. Uh, so I, I was a student two different years. And by the end of that time, uh, teaching me to basically question what's in front of me and to be intellectually honest about what I see and not just do what the assignment is, right? To right. engage my mind in what I'm doing. And then he had this really great way of uh, I didn't have the language for it at the time, but now I would say he consistently treated each student with a great deal of dignity, mm -hmm. right? Like no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter right. how wonderful or terrible you are, you have infinite worth. And so he's going to treat you with dignity all the time, even if you just totally screwed something up. And, right. and that, that was a great influence on me. Yeah. And so, hey, we're going to give a shout out to Owen Fine. All right. There you go. I, I love I love that too, and I, I think you know I I'm probably guilty of this, and I try to get better at, at it, um, you know, as my career progressed. Is that sometimes we want it when we maybe know the answer to something, we kind of want to jump in and just give it to kids right away. Um, and there there's some you know we have some notion of like hey let's let's fill kids' heads with this information and stuff like that. But that that actually what happens when you're gone, right? Like what happens when you're not that person. Uh, feeding kids and i think that especially in our world today the ability to question and seek out truth is is more important than ever and i think uh sometimes it's frustrating because i see there's maybe a little bit of a pushback to that in some regards too and i think you know great teachers uh actually you know i think really teach kids how to ask great questions not always to have the answer right because the answer can change over time right and i think that's something that's really important so i i, I love that example and so Thinking about all the admin, I mean, actually, I was curious. I was going to ask you, like you said, hundreds. So I wonder, if, like, was, was all your experiences good at teaching? But I'm not going to make you call that stuff up. <laughs> of course they were. Yeah, of course they were. So um, when you look at um, administrators that you've had, and I know that you are currently the director of strategic initiatives for your school district. 
which is a, which I love because it was a totally made up job, which are, I think are the best jobs to, to Don't have. Don't pretend like you know what that job means either. <laughs> right, right. Well, I think the best jobs, you, you figure them out along the way, right? Those are, right, right. You know, we always talk about Hey, like, you know, we're preparing kids for jobs that don't exist, but we prepare them in jobs that currently exist and don't actually change that. So I, I love that you you and your district actually created that position. So when you look at your administrators that you've had, you know, whether it's a student, you know, colleague, uh, people you work with, who's somebody that sticks out to you and why? Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, a principal that I worked for in San Diego, California, John DeVore. Uh to me, even at the time, he held the status of almost like a guru. So I had two years of teaching experience and then came there and worked there for four years. But this, for what, there's some quirky things like we saw, I saw him eat a total of one time in four years. It was like, why don't you eat? We would have faculty social, like, no, I'm good. And then he had some coach or something and you'd go in his office and there was literally nothing in the office like that will distract me from but he had this way like every and was, you know huge faculty two thousand kids every interaction with this peon wow. starting teacher he would like pick up the thread of what we had been talking about last time and he would consistently ask these questions hmm. and then I try to answer him and be like no 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 that's for you to go think about and oh my gosh that just he would set my brain on fire like oh, i gotta improve my craft because there's this guy right. that remembers and is continuously pouring into oh. me and a lot of times he would almost never like say oh and, and the answer is right i mean he would nudge and we would i mean so much professional learning but i really love that that investment in each and I, I i saw him do it with others so i know like every teacher he's investing in them right um and and it's through really cultivating this culture of reflection as a teacher so he didn't even call it right. that but it was totally like you get better as a teacher by reflecting on why and how right. and then and then you grow that way so major kudos to him he 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 <sighs> He stands out still as as someone who seriously influenced me as an educator. Well, shout out to John DeVore there. <laughs> All right. it is, you know, actually, when you mentioned John and Owen, there seems like some similarities in, you know, things that you're, yeah. you're connected yeah. to, right? And he yeah. actually, when you're explaining this, it feels very like, is this like out of like Star Wars? Like, yes, this is a very, <laughs> very Yoda very There's Yoda, my Yoda and my Obi Wan. Simplistic, yeah. doesn't eat food, you know. Just you know, lives a simple. I'm telling you, it's that's I'm interesting, you. right? Yeah, all right, so hey, so you, Andrew, you wrote a, a book called "The Elephant in the Classroom," and you know, you're you're talking about teaching, right? Which mm -hmm. I which I think you know, like um, I, the title, "The Tracing the Complexity of Teaching by Exploring." 13 competencies and practices. And it's actually, I'm, I'm really interested in your answer to this question. All right. Because you've obviously done a ton of research teaching, but probably many of the things that you discuss in this book, you wouldn't have been able to discuss your first year, right? Oh, no. So, so no. if you could go back to, you know, to Andrew in the first year of teaching, what advice would you give to yourself? Yeah. So in the book, I actually give advice to first year yeah. teachers, but I'll, I'll address myself as a first right. year teacher and say, it's okay. Like you don't have to know it all. You, you need to understand that you're a professional and all professionals grow into competence. Like you need minimum competence to enter right. a profession, but it's just ludicrous to think that beginning professionals have mastered, have mastered what they do. Um, right. And one other thing is uh, don't start with great expectations. That's just stupid. <laughs> right, right, and I, I, th I think, I think for me, this is something that uh, I've alluded to in in my work too. Is that I think you know at the beginning, you, I, I think the majority of educators that you know went past five years could go would go back and apologize to their first classrooms, right? Like they absolutely. would they would absolutely, absolutely say sorry for the things that they've done. But I think the power of this is that um, as long as you care. Uh, you know, about the work that you do, you probably even in your weakest part of your career, you're yeah. still making an impact, which I think is something that's really, really powerful. So 
uh, I'm 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 excited to dig in to this book to hear more about it and uh, hopefully I, I know I know that some of the ideas are going to really push me too and I, I love kind of the concept but uh, Andrew thanks so much for for being on the podcast and as I said if you want to check out the elephant in the costume you can check in the description down below uh, we're and and look forward to uh, the longer conversation so Andrew and everyone thanks for listening.